Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the iFox and Juice podcast. I'm your host, Juice, and I'm here with my co-host, Reen. What's going on, Reen? Nothing much. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, like, cracking up. I'm, like, looking at my Twitter. I suggested somebody watch the coronavirus porn on Pornhub, and he absolutely refuses to. I don't know why. So you did the dirty work for him, right? Yeah, I did. Because and... that was your homework assignment last week. <laughs> I did. I forgot about it until... He was asking for a link. And I was like, oh, yeah, I was supposed to, to look up some uh, porn to see what was really going on. But, yeah, it's, it's disturbing. I, I try to watch some of it. I'm like, I can't. This, why are people into this? They're wearing masks and having sex and or either hazmat suits and it's stupid ass scenarios. Like, it's not even sexy. Like, how could you get into it? It's it's the it's the forbidden fruit. Oh God! It, it didn't turn me on. None. I can't use that material. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean that's a big uh, thing in porn as far as genre goes. Is a taboo. You know the cheating, cheating on your wife. You know there's the the incest porn. There's the you know all the all the shit that you're not supposed to do is 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 freaky and turns people on people have their own fetishes well this is disturbing it's it's worse than that what is it the people that um that dress up in the animal outfits or whatever right yeah furry. <laughs> the furry yeah it's worse than that 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 one really freaks me out because that makes me think that secretly somewhere they're like into bestiality or something like why <laughs> want to dress like animals Oh God, no, I can't. I, no. That's where my mind goes, but I'm fucking okay. <laughs> We're already going down this path, and coronavirus is gonna kill us anyway. I might as well just. Re- Damn re- it! Re- <laughs> I, like, Dude, I, why could you? Why do you go there? Well, I mean, we have to take this in stages because there's a fight that we are all looking forward to. So I'm still trying to, you know, hold on to to hope that we'll be able to see it. If we die the day after that fight, I don't <laughs> give a shit, but I don't know. Stock market's plummeting. Everyone's freaking out. NBA's been canceled. Tom Hanks might die. All kinds of crazy shit is happening. But if this is how we're going to go... Oh, I'm going to a concert this weekend, too. I just tweeted this before we started the show. I'm going to a concert with 15,000 people in an enclosed arena this Saturday. And I don't give a shit. I'm still going. So if this is the last time y'all see me, it's been a fun ride. So I'm going all out. On the porn topic, I, I don't get the furry thing I said. That's where my mind goes. And the weird thing is, too, like, I never understood why some people are into foot jobs. Because I don't know why, for some reason, when I see that, I just envision, like, a girl having feet for hands. And it, like, freaks me out because I think she's, like, deformed or some shit. That's where my <laughs> mind goes. I don't know. It's fucking never weird. Watched it's that something... Show. And something that nobody should ever need to know. But yeah, I just told you guys because I might die next week. Wait, the girl's giving like a foot job instead of a hand yeah. job? Yeah, like so two feet <laughs> together rubbing. Yeah, instead of the hands, it's the feet. Yo, some of you guys are just, I can't. <laughs> Y'all are nasty. Oh, I know God. some girls got some nice and fucking soft feet and shit, but there's some girls... Try and do that with a waitress. That shit ain't gonna be fun. A <laughs> waitress. Damn. Or a bartender. Huh. See how nice those feet are. No offense to any waitresses or bartenders out there. But anyway, I mean, can we just start now? I mean, I don't even know if that's a good segue, but I mean, I guess we talked about <laughs> homework assignment, but I, I don't know if we should just get going on this because our time may be limited. Fuck, man. The world's gonna end soon, so we'll just, we'll be all over the place with this episode, right? basically yeah it's crazy man in the past hour we're getting all these updates it's just it's wild to me and and not to mention and if i do sound a little i stammer more than usual 
if I'm way more off topic, if, if it just sounds like, man, Juice is kind of losing it. Just so you guys know, pandemic is literally like my worst fear. This is a, a thing I've, I've been fearful of for, I don't know, maybe since I was like in like 15. To me, Planet of the Apes is the scariest movie in the world because it seems like the most reasonable. Everybody dying off of mass disease and monkeys just beating our asses that are super smart and super fucking strong. So that's where my mind goes. Again, like as if you well been made aware of in the past couple of minutes, I'm a little nutty, but this is just where my mind's going. So this can be the worst episode we've ever done or the best. I have no idea where this is going, but buckle in because it should be fun. So we got to rewind. We got a kind of semi preview because we don't know how much we're going to go into it because this fight may not happen this weekend. Uh, we got some interesting headlines. We got some matchups. And we got a new story. So let's just get the shit cracking. Let's start with the rewind of UFC 248. First things first, we're not really going to cover the Cowboy and the Griffin, the Max Griffin fight. It was a decent fight, but it was nothing, I don't know, to write home about. And I figured so much happened with UFC 248. We could probably just skip that one. Uh, I believe I had uh, gone with Griffin. I don't remember who you went with, Rain. Griffin. Given, okay, Cowboy won. Very controversial decision. Uh, not a robbery by any means, just a, a weird fight. It was kind of a coin flip decision. Um, we did cover Emily Whitmire for Pollyanna Viana, but that fight never happened because Whitmire was one and a half pounds overweight, and she ended up getting hospitalized. The uh, I don't know if it was the night of weigh-ins or the day of the fight. So that didn't happen. Pollyanna was very classy. She did an Instagram post. Basically wishing Whitmire the best. Didn't seem pissed off at all that her fight just got canceled. I I hope that's because the UFC paid her so she wasn't tripping about it. Because if she had that kind of attitude and they didn't pay her, man, she's a goddamn saint. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it was after the weigh-ins because she looked bad on the video that I saw. She didn't look well at all. She was very shaky, walking very slowly. So, yeah, it was... It was tough to watch. I mean, she's been out for nine months. Um, the last time she fought was what Amanda Hebas. Um, so yeah, it it just sucks, man. Because I think she even had like a bad weight cut for that Hebas fight too, and then after that she was nursing a, a hand injury. That's why she was out for so long, and then got this fight lined up, and she couldn't even make it to the cage. So I hope. You know, whatever is going on with her, they find out and get it straightened out. Cause, uh, yeah, she's had a she's had a tough road with the uh, the UFC career and just fighting overall. So, did you know that she was homeless and whatnot at one point? I I think I saw a headline about that yeah. last week, but I didn't read the story. I, I you know what? It's Jorge Masvidal was homeless for a bit too. I think it's kind of just what happens with a lot of struggling fighters. Yeah, was she, I guess, for a while there, too, even prior to, like, she, her home life wasn't too well. R- Ronda, Ronda Rousey was homeless for a bit. Who was, there was another female fighter. Oh, who was it that um, she got robbed or something? It just happened, like, a year ago. We were talking about her. Was it, was it Amanda Cooper? I don't know. I can't remember. It was but... some weird-ass story that, like, had us all scared. But, yeah, I mean, it, it happens. It's very unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah, I have to send you the video of it, but she, like, talks about her mom. And her mom is still, you know, out in the streets. She ended up out in the streets because of um, schizophrenia and, you know, just oh. mental problems. And, yeah, because her, her father passed away at a very young age. And, mm. uh her mom was like 26 years old at the time and yeah mm. yeah it's a sad story man so i'm like oh man i'm rooting for you and yeah it's tough. Was, i wasn't expecting weight issues with Whitmire too i didn't know that she's had bad cuts but she's never looked that big to me like she doesn't seem like a big uh this was a straw weight right oh no no or was it fly weight I no think straw weight that straw weight yeah yeah yeah, she's never struck me as a big girl, but I don't know, especially if she's getting hospitalized, that's definitely times where you got to reconsider what weight class you're fighting in. Yeah, she was actually waitressing for a very long time, too, and yeah, now she works for one of the, her sponsors, so 
hopefully, yeah, she can come back and get her weight issue or whatever she's going through straighten out. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. So best of uh, luck to her. Obviously, it must be just very scary being in a hospital right now in general, um, given stuff that's going on. So hoping the best for her. I mean, sucks that she didn't make the fight, but there's a... Uh, there's bigger issues at play here, as we're going to talk about a lot on tonight's show. Uh, another fight that we did cover, well, another fight that we actually covered because it did happen. Duran Wynn lost to Gerald Mearshart in a very entertaining scrap that he came out on the short end of. I don't know where to go. I mean, we were saying this last week, just in the build up to it. I don't know what to make of Wynn right now. And that was based off of one loss. He didn't make way for that fight, so that's cause you know it makes gives pause for concern. But I'm sorry, cause for concern. That gives cause for concern. But now with this, it seemed kind of similar to Stewart fight, the Stewart fight, but he was finished. So now it's like I don't know. Is is he a bust? Is did he come in too soon? Does he need to go down in ways? Does he need? I I, I have many questions about him. I, I don't know what's going on with him. Like, he didn't take him down at all. He didn't use his wrestling. I mean, granted, it was hard to close the distance. I mean, every time he would close the distance, he's getting, like, a knee or countered or whatever, right? That size, man, it makes a huge difference. But, you know, when was – he was throwing some bombs. I don't know how, like, Mershaw just – still kept coming. I mean, you saw that shit, right? They were going back and forth. It was pretty entertaining. But well, we, that we, size. We know that Wynn's capable of this. I mean, his debut with Spicely was a fight of the night, and it was just like that, even crazier, more violent. We know he can throw, but Mearshard, I mean, Spicely's a, 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 a tall dude, but he's not exactly a big guy. He's not intimidating. Mearshard, mm-hmm. he looks like a goddamn Greek statue. Yeah, crazy, and then just, he might have been rocked really, really bad, because he didn't even attempt to, like, fight the hands. I think he was just still, like, in the cloud somewhere. Like, he didn't know where the fuck he was. Yeah, he was doing the stanky leg all over the place. I mean, he was definitely hurt. Yeah, so it's, I mean, maybe one more fight, but I don't know at that weight class. I don't know that... Hope maybe he can get down to 170. I think that's what DC mentioned too that his team wants him to try to get down to 170. But that's a lot, man. Yeah, because it looks like a discipline issue with him. Like, I, I know DC is kind of undersized, even at like heavy, heavyweight, he was undersized, but you would see the weight cut. I mean, it took a lot out of him. You couldn't be saying, like, oh, he's just fat, he just needs to watch his diet. Because when he cut weight, you can see it on him, like he 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 struggled. He just has that body. He's just kind of pudgy. Win is he's definitely a strong dude, but I I'm pretty sure he cuts like next to no weight. I I don't think I think he's just fighting at his walking around weight. I mean he's five six and one eighty five for a fighter. That's a little weird. I mean most people are gonna tell him to go down a lightweight or even featherweight, but welterweight seems reasonable to me given that he's already so short. And honestly, even though he's losing, he's still doing pretty good at middleweight. So he's still going to have the power, I assume. He still has his wrestling. And he's kind of a quick guy to begin with. So if he goes down to welterweight, I'm assuming he's still going to be quick, fast, and he's always going to have his wrestling. Yeah, he's very explosive. Like, I was watching some of his old fights, and I was like, God damn, dude, just the way he blitzes and that overhand right. Just like DC, man, like, taking people down and, like, ground and pounding them. With Mirashad, he had that opportunity. It was a foot sweep. A beautiful time, like, foot sweep, too. God damn, man. He landed right on him, but I guess he was just hesitant on keeping him there because of that threat of you know a submission or whatnot he let him up but i mean i wonder if he would have just held on to it and you know maybe did something with it then it would have been a different outcome for him but yeah i don't know man it that size differential it's it's you could see it 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 was crazy 
I don't know, man. It's sad. I like him too. I love him actually. He's a really good guy. So I hope he he stays around, especially that he took his first fight on kind of late notice, I believe. But well, I don't know if it was him and Spice Lee. But regardless, I I think however he came into the UFC, it was a little too soon. So I hope they give him just a decent matchup in the next one and see where he goes from there. I hope he gets one more shot, but I also hope he goes down to welterweight. So he really needs to weigh his options. Yeah, I agree. Just one more. Let's see what happens. But just taking all that damage, too. God damn it. <laughs> Tough. Um, as we said, we're skipping over. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Before we get there. Sorry. My bad. Uh, Sean O'Malley. I almost skipped him. Sean O'Malley defeated Jose Quinones in the first round. And the goddamn sensational. It was the first, right? It wasn't the second? It yes. Was, it was the first round, yes. It was the first. Um, I'm I'm a believer in this kid now. Like, I was I, w- I was, uh, on his side because of all the Sada stuff. Uh, I, I didn't know how he was going to come back. It had been a long time. And even against a guy like Quinones, I thought, like, he might have his work cut out for him because Spring Rust is a bitch. And, uh... Sean O'Malley seems to be in that Dominic Cruz school of thought where it's all in your head or something because he looked better than ever. I don't think this is just a thing of that Quinones isn't that great of a fighter. This is kind of what they use him for. But even in this case, no one's beat him up like this. So this was uber impressive. And my big thing, my big gripe with Sean O'Malley for a while was that he's talented, he's athletic, he's creative, but it seemed like he would just spam flashy techniques just spinning back fists and roundhouse kicks and spinning kicks and just kind of for the sake of it but this fight showed he's he's getting some intelligence he's picking his shots and he knows what to do the fact that he caught him with like a check right hook on the temple stumbled him and didn't just go the usual left right left right against the cage trying to finish him he went for a high kick that was super appropriate it's like the perfect move at that point I was like, man, this kid, this kid's got the eye. He's he's putting it all together now. Well, prior to him putting him down, like he had some crazy ass stutter step going on. His his movement was so beautiful. Fuck, man, he was out for two years. It didn't look like it. His, yeah. his footwork did look better. Like he and it looked functional too. It wasn't just like him being flashy. Like it actually had a purpose. Yeah insane like did you notice the tail of the tape picture for him he looked hella old i was staring no. at it <laughs> no and i i want to say during one of the prelims I, I was watching it on tv so there was like a commercial so they had just gone back from commercial and they were just doing the 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 face-offs or whatever and someone dc i forgot someone on the booth said oh we apologize for the last screenshot for the tail of the tape, that was a mistake or something. But I don't know if they're talking about that or I, I forget what fight it was for. But I'm pretty sure it was in the pool. Oh no, I was looking at him like, damn, he looks hella old. He's only 25. Like he looked hella mature or something. But damn, dude, he looked really good though, putting all that muscle on. Oh, he did. He did put muscle yeah. on. I think I missed that. He put some muscle on. He's a he definitely now. didn't. Yeah, he didn't look as scrawny, but I I, I kind of probably also thought that it was maybe he'd gained weight, you know, not fighting for two years. Maybe he just wasn't as disciplined and probably just had a little fat on him or something. No, he put some muscle on him. Yeah. Still undefeated with that gorgeous hair. He got a big dick energy. You notice that? The way he just <laughs> dresses. and He's so fucking cool. Even outside the cage, inside the cage. Like, dude. They need to market him. They do. He's that new age kid, man. He, they need to really blow him up. I hope nothing fucking happens with Wasada and this bullshit, you know? Uh, him being out for two years. Fucking, that's a crime. But at the same time, it's like, look what, what you know, look what we got. Look at his performance. Yeah, I'm, I'm also under the impression, too, that given that he was so young... And hasn't had a bunch of fights, hasn't been taking damage over the past two years. He's just been able to upgrade his software, you know, gain knowledge, uh, do the get get the skills in order to just perform at a higher level. 
Uh, they they have marketed him well, I think, since the jump. The Osada issue, I want to say that it was, quote-unquote, out of their control, but we know that's kind of not true. But, yeah, should he willingly or unwillingly, should he just stay clean and there's no more fuckery like that? Yeah, he should he should be good, and people are definitely going to want to see him fight. Hey, hell, I mean, he didn't make a fan out of me. For some reason, I'm just not going to like the guy. But... He's very skilled, and I'll definitely take him way more seriously going into the future. Yeah, fun to watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, lo- lo- love him or hate him, you can definitely admit that he is fun to watch. Um, skipping over the Cowboy Griffin fight, as we mentioned earlier, but I did want to highlight Neil Magny's performance over Lee Jinglang. Man, speaking of not taking any time off, I mean, granted, this was like like 15 months as opposed to as opposed to two years but still man unbelievable fucking close it's 16 months he was out 16 months yeah yeah that fuckery man was sort of fuckery well his was a a bit of that like he didn't get that much of a suspension but i think he'd gotten hurt once or twice too that too oh, okay yeah and he'd gotten knocked the fuck out by ponzinibbio so he should have taken some fi- you know, time off for that. Maybe the Usada thing was a blessing in disguise because that was kind of a scary knockout. And he came back, and he got he got hurt by Jing Lang too, but he recovered very quick. You know, it's good to see one of the, the good guys fighting again and just, you know, him taking on one of the, the toughest guys in the division that was, like, on a surge. Nobody wanted to really fight that kid. And then... He just dominated him for three rounds. Yeah, like, I got to Yeah. That's just crazy. What is it? The second round, they're throwing... He was throwing all kinds of fucking combos and shit. And Lee was just, you know... Some of the head movement was effective. You know, some of it wasn't. But scooped him up. Magni just scooped him up and put him on his ass and made it look hella easy. Like he wasn't shit. That's a fight that I think, well, maybe except for the first round. I mean, you can show that as far as, like, you, you got to have some heart to fight in this shit. But that's a fight that I think, especially from the second round on, coaches should show their students. Like, this is a, to me, it was damn near a perfect M- MMA fight. Like, as far as a performance, striking, grappling, like, he did it all. He blended it all together, and he excelled in everything. It was It was brilliant. Yeah, I loved it. And then he called out Kiesa, which is interesting because Kiesa did accept. He said he's in. I'm on. You know, I'm all in. Um, he tweeted that that night during the fights. Um, and I guess Jeff Neal saw it, and he wasn't very happy with it because Jeff Neal's been chasing him. He's he's been wanting to fight him. And uh, Jeff Neal's said, been wanting to fight Magni. No, Kiesa. Oh. Yeah. He's been wanting to fight him. They've been going back and forth on Twitter. Well, actually, Jeff Neal has been, Kiesa has been kind of quiet. But uh, Neal said, though, I thought you were only trying to fight ahead, bro. You respond to that call out, and he isn't even ranked right now. But you completely avoid me. Yeah. No one wants to smoke with Jeff Neal now that he's not, you know, Working at the restaurant, he's he's training full time. Nobody wants that smoke. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I don't know. Jeff Neal might be one of those guys, like you know, like Khabib earlier in his career, that not a lot of people wanted to fight him. He may be that. Well, Usman, I mean, he he's the welterweight champ, and that's how he was earlier in his career. So, yeah, Jeff Neal might be that guy right now. Maybe a while till we see him back. That would be unfortunate, but he's just getting better too. So. If I was in welterweight, I'd want to fight that guy right away because the longer you wait, the least likely it is that you're going to beat him, I think. Yeah, I agree. But yeah. yeah, either fight would be fine with me, but yeah, Jeff Neal, man. Can't get a fight. Next fight, good old Benny Dariush was a bad motherfucker and knocking out your car close. Man, that was a, I don't know if you could call that comeback of the year. Because he was winning 90% of that fight. He took closest back for basically the whole first round. 
got stunned early in the first, looked to be on his way out, started just exchanging, clocks close, clocks him again, and just laid his ass the fuck out. I, I mean, it's not the it's not the first time Darius has dropped someone like that. I mean, he he knocked the fuck out of James Vick too. Obviously, now we can just say that's James Vick. Jakar Close is a bad motherfucker. He's he's tough as hell, and Darius just floored him. Right, unleash the fury, Benny. <laughs> it looked like he snapped, and he just like went after Close. That was like a wild exchange. Then he gets on the mic and he sounds so sweet. After that flurry and that wild, like, devastating knockout, he's, like, so sweet on the mic. That's why I text you. Like, he's too nice. Reen, come on. He just (laughs) murdered a man on live TV. I don't know, dude. He's one – I think – I don't know. He's probably one of those. It's like you poke him a little bit, he just snaps. At any event, maybe? I don't know, dude. I'm like, ah, this is weird, kind of scary. Because he has, like, two sides to him. Well, come on. I I mean, I think he really is just a a really, really nice dude at heart. But he trains at King's. His his master's Cordero. That's true. He's in there with fucking savages like Gaslam and Verdum. And uh, I don't know if Vangelay is still there. But have you seen videos of Vangelay and Verdum sparring? the God. scariest shit you ever see in the world in your life yeah that's true huh yeah you can't you can't be a bitch at king's mma i mean they, they won't they'll get kicked out very quick such a handsome gentleman though but still you're not <laughs> into him what does the guy need to do i don't know james Krause is a perfect example i'm sure Darius has that much heart and is that crazy too okay okay sorry also, you know that he wants to beat the fuck out of Diego Sanchez too, right? I didn't, I didn't Who? put that on the docket, but um, James Kraus. What? Why? Because well, yeah, he doesn't like uh, that guy that shall not be named. Oh shit, man! What are you gonna keep it out on Diego for? Oh no! He's saying he's selling wolf tickets, so I'll, I'll, I'll show him what's up by showing how easy it'll be to humiliate Sanchez, something like that. I kind of dig it. I just don't want Sanchez to be like the the sacrificial lamb. I want to see it. I mean, <laughs> I don't know where the fuck Sanchez goes from here, but I'm down just with making Kraus uh, either getting more wins, being in more exciting fights, going up the rankings, whatever it does to benefit his career. I'm down with because I'm just a, f- a huge Jim- James Kraus fan. I'm, I'm I'm not really taking Diego seriously anymore. Oh, it's just sad, man. He's in a cult. We need to save him. We can't yeah. sacrifice him. Maybe James Krause beating his ass will save him. Oh, okay, okay. If it's a rescue mission, then I'm down. You, you got to think of the greater good here. You got to think of the big picture. That's true. Maybe he'll big brother him or something. Even something like that. <laughs> right? Yep. Dariush, co-main event. Bro, there's so much uh... to... There's so much to say about this fight that I honestly don't even know where to start. I did talk about it earlier. They had me on again on the Martial Arts Chat Podcast. God knows why. They might cancel me after the last one because we started talking fucking Bernie Sanders and communists and all kinds of other shit. But regardless of that, this fucking fight, it, without a doubt, I mean, it, it was an instant classic. And it's not often you hear that nowadays. I think it's been a while since I've heard that phrase. This fight was an instant classic. One of the most brutal fights you'll see, regardless of gender. And it definitely is the best female fight of all time that I've seen. I don't want to say outright, be, outright because I've been covering. I've been I want to say covering, but I've avidly been watching women's MMA for eight years. In the eight years that I've covered it, I didn't really think Misha Tate and Julie Ketty would get beat because that was such a crazy ass war. But this one beat it by by a mile. This was a uh, this was amazing. Just thinking about it, I get exhausted. Like, that entire five rounds, I was just on the edge of my seat. I was so anxious and just, man, by the end of it, I I was exhausted. I was so amazed at the same time. God damn, dude. kind of want to watch it again. Yeah, I haven't watched it since. So, I mean, I guess I'll 
I'll, I'll ask because I don't even think we spoke. We've spoken a lot about the fight, but I haven't asked you. The, I mean, who did you have? Who did you pick? Who, who won? It was a toss-up for me. I really didn't know. So you didn't judge the fight while it was happening? No. I was just enjoying it. It, it was hard for me to do, but off the like top of my head from what I remember, I know that Joanna for sure won the third round. No, I'm sorry. Sorry, was it the third? I think it was the third, right? Yeah. Because she looked like she was rocked. She was... Um, yeah. She took she the hematoma. She took the hematoma, but yeah, I'm like, okay, she. I know she won one round for sure, mm-hmm. but I think I gave all the other ones to Wiley. Now, granted, I know that's not the best scorecard, and I need to rewatch it to know for sure, but... I will say this, as much shit as we have talked, I would not have been even remotely mad. I would not have been happy, but I would not have been remotely mad if they gave it to Joanna. I'm not saying that Wiley stole that one. I'm just saying it was that close where you couldn't be mad either way. The good thing is people are kind of making a, a thing out of the scorecards. It's a fight. People are going to do that. But the good thing is no one's saying that this was like a robbery. People are saying, I disagree. I think Joanna should have won, but no one's acting like this was Reyes and, and Jones type shit. Right, right, yeah. I would have been happy either way. I mean, I, as much shit that I talked about, you know, regarding Joanna, like, I respect, man. I mean, she brought it, you know, thank you for entertaining us. All of us. Fuck, that's probably the best fight ever I've ever seen. That's just fucking truly amazing. I had no idea she still had it. So, good luck to everybody in the rest of the division. She's still around. She's not going anywhere. She, I will definitely lay off Ioana until she makes her next racist comment. Because if anyone's going to make racist comments, it's me. <laughs> she can't take that shit from me. So, Ioana, yeah. you got to pass for now. Right? Like, at least she's fighting and not causing fucking issues outside the cage. Oh, don't worry. We're going to talk about that soon enough. Don't, don't, don't you worry. But that, yeah, this was definitely worthy of that. And to your point, I've, I've put it in my top five, top five or 10. I'm still debating. I, have, I've, I write my list out every once in a while. Top five or 10 favorite fights ever. I've always said that I think Lawler and McDonald too is overrated. I hope this fight shows. I'm, I'll go on the record. This is easily better than Lawler McDonald too. I'm sure I'm going to get some hate on that. But I think this is one of those fights where it's like, okay, at least there's a debate to be had because so many people didn't even want to entertain any... So many people didn't even want to entertain the fact that there's other fights out there that may be as good, if not better. And I think this is easily better. If you want to debate, go ahead. But there's more fights that are going to come up that I have, that I like, that I think you have to agree is better than that one. Yeah. Well, this is the... I guess um, the most like emotionally invested for me in a long time. So maybe that's the reason why I'm like, okay, it's one of my, one of the best fights I've seen. You might be onto something there because I wasn't emotionally invested in Lawler and McDonald. And I think that's why so many people, so many people like it because they thought that fight was going to kind of suck and it turned out to be great. So I think that that's, what's up with that fight is like, oh, it surprised us because it was actually really good. But to me, I was never under the impression that Rory McDonald was going to win that fight. Even when it looked close, I still was like positive he wasn't going to win because he never showed any real killer instinct. And at the end of that fight, it showed Lawler's crazier and tougher. I'm like, well, I knew that going in, so I wasn't really surprised by the outcome. This fight, I expected Zhang to get it done in a round or two. I wasn't surprised she could go five rounds. I just didn't know she could go five rounds like that. And yeah, she gassed. And yeah, she didn't look great in spots. But her fucking heart, man. Yeah, amazing. I wonder when she'll come back in and who she's going to fight. Whew. I hope they do market her well. I mean, Dana mentioned it. You know, they did it with Conor McGregor. They did it with Ronda Rousey. They're going to do it with her. So I'm just wondering how they're going to do it. Because she has some killers in that division. And if if I'm hearing correctly, Tatiana has been training 
you know, she's been posting some training videos and whatnot on her Instagram. So she's back training. And I think she wasn't training at all for a while there because of her neck issues. So she's a dark horse in the division, man. I don't know. If she comes back, this going to be tough. It should I'm be a pretty, good fight, but it's going to be tough. I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet money that Suarez will not be her next fight. Um, I, I don't take a, a, a rematch out of the equation. I think that's a strong possibility. An immediate rematch would be a strong possibility in this case, I think. But I think, I think the uh, if Rose wins, if Rose beats Andraj, I think for sure she's next. Especially if she doesn't really get hurt. Uh, obviously, we also gotta. I'm not saying I love Rose. I'm not saying this at all to badmouth her. Obviously, also there's an issue of of her uh, mental state if she's all there when well if she wins you know so, sometimes she likes to take some time off so she looks to be dedicated and hopefully she's all good but but you never know so i think if rose beats andraj i think she'll be next in that fight oh man that one's gonna break my heart either way but i think that's what's gonna happen next if she wins that's a big if if she wins i hope they don't do a rematch well, I'm sure you want to see a rematch down the line. With, with Joanna and Wiley? Yeah. Yeah, down the line, yes. But not right now. Not right now. I, I, I don't I, want to entertain that at all. No, I'm I, good. I can, I can get behind that. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want her to become like a Holly Holm. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying, cause, cause Holly was taking too many hard fights, right away. She just wanted to stay active and shit. Yeah, I get you. You we brought up earlier, and th- this is my main question regarding this fight. You were talking about the UFC and Dana marketing her, and and what Dana had been saying about that. It it sucks because like a great fight isn't exactly guaranteed to give you success. There's people who've never really had great fights and become superstars in boxing. I would say uh, Mayweather. And shit, even in, in MMA, it's a little different because Connor had a lot of first round knockouts and stuff, so that is exciting in itself. Same thing with like Ronda. But she they didn't really have good fights until after they became really famous. So I don't know, it's kind of a dicey proposition to say that Zhang's gonna become a, a, a big star because of a good fight. But I really think the stars are aligning for her. I think this is, I, I'm not saying that USC doesn't have to help her. They, they should do something to promote their champs as, you know, they don't really do that all that great sometimes. But with Jean, I think she's done so much just with herself. She's learning English. We talk about that all the time. And she's getting really good at it. If you heard the post fight presser, obviously her, her, her translator is not that good, but her English is still pretty spot on. Even after a war like that, she was still able to say a couple of sentences pretty clearly. There's that angle. Of course, she's really exciting. Of course, she's got a, a gigantic country behind her. And yeah, this was one of the best fights in UFC history. I, I really think the stars are going to align for her. I'm not saying she's going to become the next Ronda or anything, but I really think her, her, all the factors are there. And also this is a small thing, but I don't know. I think it kind of helps sometimes. Nobody ever says her nickname, but now we know Magnum is one of the best nicknames out there because of her style, because of how hard she hits. Magnum Wiley Zhang is fucking perfect. God, I love it. And of course, even just her her little pre fight psh, rifle shooting thing is fucking is brilliant. Yeah, it's pretty badass, dude. I'm so glad she won so she can go back home. I was worried that she couldn't go back home to her mom's. So I, I'm sure her mom's gonna still give her shit. Like, why are you showing emotions? Why are you crying at the end of the fight? She probably like, give her shit for that. But I'm glad she can go home. <laughs> Saying it in a joking manner, fucking Christ. No, I'm not. I mean, her mom's hardcore, man. She probably will check her and be like, you know what? Great. Congratulations. You brought home, you know, the belt back. You did great. But let me just tell you, 
that's how Asian moms operate. And it sounds like that's how she is. She's like sobbing and crying. Like, you know, I'm traveling, I'm exhausted. I I don't know what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And her her mom's like, excuse me? (laughs) Checked her, man. She's like traveling from like Thailand to Abu Dhabi and, you know, wondering if she's going to even make it to the U.S. because of her visa issues and whatnot, going through all this training and talking to her mom, you would think her mom would comfort her, right? No, man, that's not how Asian moms operate. Had she lost, she would have beat her ass like if she came into the into the house with shoes on, huh? Yeah, she would have been like, nope. <laughs> you can't come home. Nope. You're a disgrace. Oh, God, stop saying that, Rita. You hurt my feelings. I'm not <laughs> even true. Asian. It's true, man. Oh, God. <laughs> so, We're congratulations. Gonna- we're going to talk about other Asians hurting feelings later on, too. But, man, every time I see anything even roughly translated, I'm like, my God, shame is a powerful thing, and the Asians do it better than anybody. Jesus Christ. Um, I, I think that's all we can say for that fight. We can go on. I'm only going to stop it there because we can go on all night about this, and I know this is going to come up. It, it, a, a random ass strawway fight will be announced, and we're going to be like, yeah, but remember uh, – Wiley and Joanna. I mean, it's, it's going to keep coming up. It's going to be a recurring theme, so don't you worry. More talk. We'll continue with this because we're never going to have enough of this. On to the main event uh, in quotes, I guess. It was funny. We were saying, like, all last week and weeks prior, Joanna and Wiley was the main event. That was the real main event. And I kind of thought we were saying that only because maybe Yoel didn't really earn his spot against Izzy. And I'm like, okay, this this is the fight that we're psyched for because Yoana kind of earned it and Zhang is obviously a badass. And with the performance, with what happened in that fight, I mean, I, I'm glad. I'm glad that we were vindicated for that. <laughs> yeah, I was too exhausted after the co-main to even watch the main. That, that's how much I was emotionally invested. Like I was truly exhausted. I'm like, I can't, I can't hang with this. Especially that, like, that first round. It's so slow. Reen, you could have, you could have smoked meth ten minutes before the main event. <laughs> you would have found a way to fall asleep with this fucking thing. I know. I think John Anik like explained it best. He said some like pedestrian like or. Yeah. Right. Is that what pedestrian, he said? Something like pedestrian performance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, Anik, you're spot on, dude. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. With all the talks, the the inspirational video messages, I just did not expect that. I, I rewatch, I watched it afterwards, and wow. And and what a great decision you made, right? <laughs> For what? For going with Yoel? No, for watching the fight. Oh God. Yeah, horrible. How much blame do you put on Adesanya for how that fight turned out? How can you blame him? It's Yoel Romero. That's what I feel like, too. Come on. he Did you guys not see his head snap back when he felt his first punch? I think there's also this thing of... Especially because Adesanya's been so active since he came into the UFC... And he has had great performances, great fights, uh, highlight reel knockouts. I think it's hard to forget. I I think it's easy to forget that some of his performances weren't all that great. His first fight in the UFC was okay. I mean, he finished the guy, but it was, like, kind of sloppy. Then his follow-up fight with Marvin Vittori, a lot of people thought he may have actually lost that fight. I won't say a lot of people, but a, a, a decent percentage of people. Thought it was a close fight and he could have lost. Obviously, he has the the knockout of Brunson. He has the war with Gastelum. But even that uh, the Anderson Silva fight, if you did not know who they were, that fight wasn't all that great. But then he knocks out Robert Whitaker in, in spectacular fashion, and you know he's a god. Adesanya is not just engagey. I mean, I love the guy and I I think he's super exciting. And no, this wasn't an exciting fight. I enjoyed his performance. I think he did what was necessary, and the fact that Romero couldn't stop it, I mean, fuck it, if you can do it, 
with with something so simple, it's on the other guy to stop it. And with all his uh, with all his uh, explosivity, with uh, his strength, with he, his goddamn silver medal in wrestling, he couldn't or wasn't able to do shit about it. I put it squarely, like ninety nine percent blame on Romero. Yeah. He's the one that, and, and I'm of this opinion too. Granted, I don't I don't know shit about fighting as far as I've never been in a actual fight before. But I'm of the opinion that if I was a contender and I was about to fight for the title, I don't give a shit whether it's Israel Adesanya, Steve Miocic, it could be fucking Justin Gagey and Tony Ferguson and 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 ridiculously exciting fighters. I am not going to be under the impression that they're going to want to get in a war with me or or try and knock me out. If they can find a way to make it really easy on themselves and not exhaust themselves and not take damage, I'm going to assume that that's what they're going to do. I don't care how exciting they've been. Because why would they put themselves in danger? And I don't know how Romero wouldn't think that. I understand Adesanya is very skilled, so you don't want to try too much against the guy. But he literally did nothing. He didn't engage at all. I mean... Adesanya had all these images and these looks. He was preparing. If he does this, I'm going to do this. Like, he had a game plan going in. I think he had, like, three different um, outcomes that he thought of. The way he's going to, you know, handle them. Knock them out. Flying knee. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. If you don't have a dance partner, it's it's kind of hard to perform. Even though, yeah, he's the last style bender, he should be able to do anything in there. No, it's not like that with somebody like Yoel. And it's it's disappointing for me, especially like, like I said, all the inspirational videos and, okay, this is your last chance. Why he didn't engage? Why wasn't he explosive? Why didn't he use his wrestling? His greatest advantage is his wrestling. Why didn't you use that? Because Papi Fidel taught him well. Do the <laughs> least amount of effort and get rewarded. He's a communist, Rian. What do you expect from him? God damn it. I know. God damn it. Those antics. Cuban antics. The, the God damn it. The vet playing around. and It's sad, man. That was his last chance, I think. I mean, it, it's possible that he could get another title shot. I mean, Holly Holmes done it several times. So, but... Dana wasn't too happy with this, and this is the main event. It's in Vegas. It's Israel's first time, you know, a pay-per-view event, big, huge event, and it falls short. I don't know, man. I think Ray Longo was actually uh, he was going in on Israel. I'm like, why? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying he's not to blame. I mean, yeah, he could have done more exciting shit, but for what? He's the champ. Right, and it's Joel Romero. Like, dude, your bro, your your kid, your guy, Chris Whiteman got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> if anyone should know, right? Right, like you don't fuck with that man. You wait for him to make a mistake, and he didn't do anything. So, why go yeah. down? Why get on him like that? Why talk so much shit? You know what's funny is like, I, I, I heard so many people say that this was the worst fight ever, and all this shit, and one of the most boring fights ever. It's not. I think no. it, it's, it was not good, but I don't think it's the worst. But I also think I wasn't super bored during it, and I was kind of intrigued because I like seeing Israel's thought process and the way he works. Even though it was mostly just leg kicks, I still thought found it interesting. But the other thing is Romero's only knockout loss was to Faye Zhao, and it was very similar to this. He was doing, like, next to nothing. And then Faye Zhao just kind of put him against the fence and spinning backfisted him and knocked him out. So I was like, Israel can do this, not just because he's an expert striker. Like, he's done this before. This has happened to him. So I, I kind of thought, like, even though this is pretty lame, he could still get knocked out because this has happened to him before. So, I, I don't think a lot of people have seen that fight, but if you haven't watched it, and you'll see, like, oh, he fights like this sometimes. This is just a thing he does. So do you still want to deport Yoel <laughs> for that performance? I mean, do we really need communists like him in this country? <laughs> uh, so inspiring, so intimidating, so you don't want to fuck with that guy. But he's basically the guy outside the club who who works out a lot and wears, like, tank tops. But he ain't down to fight. He's just the one, whoa, motherfucker, come on. Let's go right now. Let's go right now. He's one of those guys, but he's never going to go. He's oh, not going to fight you. He's just going to get in your face and, and go around in circles around you. Oh, shit, man. That's Yoel. <laughs> oh, God damn it. 
And I fully expect if I ever run into you all, you <laughs> flying me my fucking head off. But hey. <laughs> I never liked the guy anyway, so fuck him. I'm glad oh, people. Man. I never liked a, a couple of people. Uh, you know, we, we kind of got back, I don't want to say on the Ioana bandwagon because of the fight, but we, we respect her now. We, you know, she had to earn that respect. But yep. some of the people we've been hating on lately, people are kind of getting on the boat. And we're going to talk about some of these motherfuckers later. But I'm I'm glad people were like, man, Romero ain't shit. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> oh, God damn it. He did it. He did it. Deserve this fight. I know we talk about that word deserve here and it's kind of bullshit. But hey, it's, there was some there was some good people that I would have. Cannoneer wouldn't have fought like that. Oh, God damn. Ooh, that's another I, one. I know Costa's next. And, you know, th- I'm not even going to go into him because they, they Whatever, what the fuck with him? But he's he's next. But even if it wasn't cause the Con- cannoneer looked available, I don't know what had happened with him. I know he missed Wade at the the, the what was it the Whitaker? He was a backup for some. I forget what what had happened. Well, it was because of Darren Till, right? Because oh, he Darren had, Till, that's right, that's right. He had visa issues or something. So yeah, I mean, but still, it's like, come on. I mean, who's he gonna fight next? We just announced it. Um, uh, Whitaker versus Till. No, 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 cannoneer. Cannoneer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Let me see. Oh, yeah. But I know, I know they did just announce, or I don't know if it's, it's official, uh, if it's official yet. But um, Till versus Whitaker. What happened with Whitaker though? Nobody knows, right? Because he was out for. He didn't say it was personal reasons. Yeah, it was something personal. Yeah, then someone, and then Darius too, making that comment like, "I want to be a dad like you." I've heard things that like yeah his daughter was sick or something he's never gone on public to say it so i have no idea what it was we're going to talk about whitaker later on too this is all just speculative but mm-hmm. best believe anyone who's saying fuck out of sanya and he's boring this and that wait till his next fight whether it's costa or Can- cannoneer trust me that shit ain't gonna be boring yeah i don't know I, nothing's coming up when i google cannoneer mm. so i don't know what's going on with him um, we'll we'll see. He's definitely still a threat though, and he's he's still waiting in the wings. So watch out with him. He's a dark horse too. For sure, for sure. We did not mention this fight last week because we did it on a Friday. The fights were going on as we were recording, but there was a the Invicta Phoenix Series Three. I'm uh, sorry, Phoenix Rising, uh, the third uh, installment of this, and the main event was between uh, Lisa Versosa. And Julia Stolyarenko, I wish I'm saying that right. I, I it's kind of a hard name for me to pronounce, but man, if you guys have not seen it, even 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 after all this, even with Riley and Joanna, you need to seek this fight out. Go on Fight Pass and seek this fight out because my God, these girls went to war. Oh my God, that, I didn't watch it until we got on this, like right before we got on this uh, the recording. Holy shit, man! The canvas was bloody. Mm-hmm. blood dripping everywhere she had like two open cuts on her face oh. one really bad one like on her forehead and then another one um uh, i think it was on her cheek or something but damn dude smiling open, yes smiling too. still smiling at the end Psycho. shout out to, yeah shout out to the cutman that handled those two cuts you know for for her to be able to still continue that's when they did the open scoring, right? For the yeah, the, yeah the they did. Yes. Phoenix Rising, yeah. And, and uh, Max Holloway was out there and checking that out. Boy, does that really make a difference, huh? The the open scoring and knowing if you're down or not. I wanted to know what would happen because I'm like, are they gonna have it on the screen? Like, is everyone gonna know? And I don't know how the people in the audience knew. I don't know if they could see through the screens or something, or if they were just gonna announce it. But what I found was interesting was there was a commissioner with a phone. And it said the score in between rounds. It would say blue corner, 10, red corner, 9. And it would show only the trainer. They wouldn't say anything. They would just show them. So it was up to the trainer to tell their fighters, okay, you're doing good or you're you're down a round or we got to train. It was on the trainers to say that. And I think that's very smart because if you just go out and say it, say it to everybody, yeah, you'd be like, well, yeah, what do I have to worry about? I'm winning, so I'm, I'm cool. And if you're announcing, oh, yeah, so-and-so is losing, and they could put, like, undue pressure on them. Like, oh, of course, you need to fight tooth and nail, especially if you're losing. But once you hear it out loud and, you know, some people react differently. So I thought it was cool that only the coaches knew, knew 
So it was up to the coaches to tell their fighters. Because there was probably some fighters that were saying, too, like, don't tell me. Like, if I'm ahead or I'm, I want to fight, like, my life depends on it regardless, you know? Damn, that's gangster. Well, those ladies brought it to the table, man. I would suggest you guys watch it. It's actually available on YouTube right now. So oh, shit. If you don't go, yeah, if you don't have Fight Pass, definitely check it out. Yeah, and, and it brought my attention to uh, Julia Stolyarenko. I still hope I'm saying that right. I did not have any idea who she was before Friday night, and now best for, I, I've always been a fan of Lisa Ver, Versosa. She had the coolest nickname. Her name, her nickname used to be uh, Strangler because her last name was Spangler, but I guess she got married, so she changed it, and uh, now she's the battle angel. But either way, it fucking works. That girl's cool, man. One of the like, sweetest-looking girls you ever see, but she's a goddamn killer, and I'm pretty sure both of these girls... I'm pretty sure Julia's going, but if not, even even Lisa might be in the UFC very soon because that was a hell of a fight. Uh, that does it for the rewind of UFC 248. So let's get into the preview of UFC Brasilia. <laughs> We're kind of going to rattle these off and to just get straight to the point. There's a few fights on here that are pretty interesting, but I don't know if they're worth detail. So we're going to do a, a fuck, Mary kill for a couple of these fights. So there's a, I believe these are all, except for the exception of the Marcano fight, these are all in the prelims, uh, ESPN Plus prelims. So Veronica Macedo is fighting Bia Malecki. Uh, Iluzu Zuleski, I can never say his name right. Lizu Zuleski, the, the capoeira guy. Uh, he's going to fight Alexi Konchenko. That's also on the prelims. And Hanato Marcano is going to fight Demir Hadzovic. So Rain, fuck, Mary kill. What, what, what do you got for these three? God damn it. This one's hard. Um, Moicano's fight is like a given, though. Uh, and then Macedo, she's had like three canceled bouts. Did you notice that? Yeah. I want to marry that one cause, oh, because you know what? She needs a fight. <laughs> I'm interested in this one, but this this girl, she's only been a pro for, what, a very short time. Yeah. I think she's like 1-0, so I just want to see Macedo fight. So I'll, I'll marry that one. <laughs> the fuck part <laughs> Zaleski okay that that could be honestly that could be like a fight of the night it's just I, I feel like Zaleski has shown a lot but not enough and Konchenko it's like the same thing that's kind of why I didn't want to go into detail about it yeah and then Moicano like I said it's like a gimme fight so like I don't even care <laughs> I should but yeah I mean you, you fought Aldo you fought the Korean zombie and then now they're they're giving you this guy's. I rather see him like fight a rank fighter, you know. Mm-hmm. So you can kill that one off. So yeah. marry marry Zuleski Konchenko and kill Marcano Hadzovic. Yeah, I know it's kind of twisted, but no, I think I'm with you because yeah, yeah, I I, uh, I think I'll fuck Macedo and Malaki because yeah, it should it could be a fun fight. Malaki's I mean one fight in, so who the hell knows? Macedo's. Had quite a few fights in the UFC, and she can be exciting when she wants to be. She submitted Viana in her last fight, so shit, she may be getting better. This could be a first round finish, so I fucks with that one. I'd marry Zaleski and Konchenko because a lot of unknowns is kind of a dicey marriage, but there can be a lot of promise. So maybe in the long run it'll work out. And yeah, I'll just kill Marcano and Hadzovic because I feel like it's kind of yeah, like you said, a gimme. It seems like a tuna fight for for Marcano. Not that that's a bad thing, just not that impressive i guess so there's a uh, two espn prelim fights uh espn plus prelim fights the whole card's on espn plus but this is the prelim portion so i guess we'll do kind of like a rapid fire on both of these amanda hebas is fighting random marcos and juicy a formiga is fighting brandon moreno honestly these might be the two best fights on the card they, they can be so exciting. And I'm fans, obviously a big fan of Hivas and Moreno, but I also like Formiga and Marcos. So just what are your general thoughts on both Rain and, and who do you think will win? Dude, Hivas is taking this one, I believe. Dude, did you remember she fought Dern? Yeah, Fama Dern. Yes. And Beat she, the breast but... milk out of her. <laughs> She dominated that fight. I mean, Miranda, her striking's okay. Her wrestling, good luck with trying to take down Hebas. 
If you do, I get submitted. It's gonna be a rough night. Thanks for stepping in, because Paige Van Zandt got hurt again, but now I'm going with Hebus. And for Miga and Moreno? I didn't even know this was on the on the card. This is gonna be a fucking banger. Just based on Moreno's last performance. Juicy man. Juicy fucking beat fucking figs. That's fucking tough. I'm gonna go with Moreno. Sorry. Yeah, uh, Juicy is <laughs> the only one. So yeah, what a what a record that guy has. Even though he's had a lot of losses, he beat Figueroa. Nothing else really matters, you know. <laughs> right, but fucking man. crazy. Yeah. Moreno's been looking good, and this is his second chance because he was cut and he came back to the UFC. So yeah, different uh, fire. I'm with you. I think uh, yeah, Hebus. I like Marcos. I love that she's always taking on fights, but this is a bit more that she can chew off i think because he was is a goddamn monster and i think she's a problem she's a big fucking problem i think uh yeah juicy for and brandon moreno taking moreno that's my boy one of my top five fighters right now probably i will never go against that guy and he's probably the only fighter in the ufc who makes me proud to be mexican so him and aldana aldana still <laughs> still up there still up there the He's whitest, so worthy. yeah, the whitest Mexicans in the UFC. Yeah, I'll go go with them. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so Moreno and he was there. Onto the main card. Uh, we'll slow it down a little bit for this one because it's the main card. Francisco Trinaldo's fighting John Magdesi. Trinaldo's one of those guys that like every time you want to bet against them, you immediately second guess yourself. But Magdesi, like he hasn't. He's kind of been off and on. Mm-hmm. I think he's coming off of, like two or three wins. But I don't think he's fought in a while. It's, it's tough. It's tough to pick. I'll I'll go with Ronaldo just for that reason that it's it's hard to bet against him because he he seems like there's always a lot of pissed off people at his fights because they expect him to lose but he doesn't. Right? He's 41, dude. He doesn't look at it, look it at all. And he's a lightweight. Like I understand Romero and Mark Hunt, some of these older guys, like they're in bigger weight classes. This guy has a cut weight and he's a gigantic lightweight and he's still doing the damn thing. Right? And he has a lot of power. Yeah, this will be a good fight. I can't count out Trinaldo. No, uh, he dominated Bobby Green in his last fight. I'm going to go with old man power again. And still, he's still, I think to this day, is probably one of the most disgusting knockouts I've ever seen in my life when he knocked out Evan Dunham with that knee to the body that sounded like he got shot. Oh, my God. That was fucking agonizing. I'll never forgive Trinaldo for that. He traumatized me. Him and Kyle right. Noki. Him and Kyle Noki are the ones I'm like, oh! But, uh, yeah, Kyle Noki had a front kick knockout where he kicked the dude in the body and it sounded like a gunshot, too. But those are, like, the two scariest body knockouts I think I've ever seen in my life. Uh, anyway, uh, Johnny Walker's back. Man, he got, what, that was in November that he got knocked out by Corey Anderson? So it's been, like, four months. Ah, man, he's, he's going to find Nikita Krylov. Yeah, I'll just let you start reading. There's so much to unpack, unpack there. Yeah, it's... It- he wasn't even out that long, so this is a quick turnaround for mm-hmm. for Johnny Walker. And I just wonder um, how his shoulder is holding up too. That's still a problem. I, I don't. I'm wondering though because it was dislocated, right? When he did that crazy ass worm, yeah, that celebration. And I, dude, I'm learning that shoulder. You, you don't want <laughs> to fuck with the shoulder because it doesn't heal up as well unless he's getting stem cells or something yeah I, I just wonder if this is too early for him to come back overall off of an injury and a knockout yes exactly I, i'm just gonna go with walker because i'm not sure i don't trust walker but i think i trust krylov even less <laughs> I, i'm not i'm not one of these people that think that walker is a bust because Corey anderson beat him i kind of thought that anderson would beat him i didn't think he'd beat him like that but I knew that that was a problem with Johnny Walker. If you guys haven't seen the videos of him getting knocked out before he came in the UFC, watch it because it's both concerning and fucking hilarious. I will never not laugh at it. And I'm one of these people that I'm always concerned when people get knocked out, even if it's not super serious. But I laugh my ass off at that knockout. It's one of the craziest fucking things you'll see in your life because it looks fake. Fucking, <laughs> It looks so ridiculous. But Carla, didn't he just get submitted by OSP? Um, that, and then he fought Teixeira, too, and he lost. He, that was a hard fight for him. Old man power, man. <sighs> you know Remember? what? September yeah. they fought, yep. and I, you went opposite of me. Yeah. I 
You know, you know what? I think I'm gonna go with Walker only because, yeah, Krylov. He'd been impressing outside of the UFC, but I think it's pretty evident now. It's just because he wasn't fighting UFC caliber dudes. He's a good fighter. Just he might not be UFC caliber. Walker, say what you want about him. He's beaten some good dudes in the UFC, so I'll go with Walker. And uh, yeah, I I'll just go with Walker there. Co-main event. Gilbert Dorino Burns is fighting Damian Maya in one of the one of the most anticipated fights in terms of grappling. Probably the most anticipated fight since Maya and Askren. <laughs> I was really just that. <laughs> but to be honest and to just get straight to it, I don't think it's gonna be a good night for Damian Maya. Really, you think so? B- Burns with a full camp. <laughs> It's a legit black belt. If there's anyone that can hang with him on the floor, it's possibly Burns. I mean, Jake Shields did it. And I'm assuming Burns is, if not Jake Shields level, at least close to it. And he's really athletic and can hit pretty fucking hard, too. It just has Gunnar Nelson. Yeah, his striking is pretty good. Definitely better than Maya. Just has more weapons. I mean, just based on that, I have to go with Burns. Maya can always submit any dude he gets in there with. But I think he's just got his work cut out for him. And all good things must come to an end. I mean, I know he had, like, the three-fight losing streak to Woodley and Covington and whoever else and came back, but I think it's time to, you know, he's going to he's gonna tank it here, I think. Gilbert Burns has a, a full camp. This is not a short-notice fight, so... Ooh, yeah, I can't wait for this one. Uh, I'm going to go with Burns. Damn, you went against the old man. That's not like you. It's, it's well, hard. It, did Yoel fuck it up for you? You can't go for the old dude no more? <laughs> no, with just Maya, man. Like, I think with Burns, he's, man, he's been on fire. So, I mean, Lyman good. He fought Lyman good. It choked his ass out in the first round. Gunner. God, Gunner too, yep. He went with, uh, was it, Mr. Harrison? <laughs> oh, yeah, Rob Martin. <laughs> Tony Martin. <laughs> that was a good fight, too, but... Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good one. Hope I don't know how long it's gonna last, but hopefully it's not too painful. Okay, so we both got burns there. Yeah. Main event: Kevin Lee and Charles Oliveira. Man, this is a fight. Like I, I'm surprised this guy. I guess just with Charles Oliveira, I'm I'm always surprised he hasn't fought so and so because he's been in the UFC for so long and has fought everybody. I think he's like on that Michael Bisping, Jim Miller trajectory of like already having cowboy trajectory of like so many fights in the ufc and uh kevin lee i love kevin lee i really do his knockout of gillespie was amazing unfortunately his sacrifice didn't mean anything in in the in the bernie sanders winning the race type thing because shit does not look good for his boy (laughs) but um regardless of that i don't know i don't know i don't know i don't know because kevin lee is you know this is that this is a lightweight i know he's made weight i know he seems dedicated and stuff but he's going down to brazil i'm a little worried about that away from home and you gotta imagine i mean all this shit that we've been talking about for like the past 20 minutes 25 minutes is all kind of an asterisk because the governor of brasilia is saying that they might shut down all sporting events and this can be affected this might not even happen but even if if it doesn't happen you gotta assume this is fucking at least with kevin lee's psyche I can't imagine he's been all all just go from the airport to the hotel and train. And, the, you know, who knows if the gyms that he wants to go to are closed. Who knows how the weight cut's going to go because who knows what the water's like. They're probably going to have to. I'm just thinking of all these nightmare scenarios. It, it could work, you know, Oliveira as well. But at least this is his country. He knows places to go. He knows the things to do. He knows alternatives. Because Oliveira hasn't exactly made weight all the time either. Such a dicey fight to call. And, and both guys have kind of had issues with with weight, with their performances. I'm going to just go with Lee. I really like Oliveira. But I'm just, you know, I, I really, really like Lee. So this is just kind of me rooting for Lee instead of doing any real analysis. Because... I think there's so many fucked up propositions going into this fight. It's kind of hard to pick a clear winner or or a smart pick. Yeah, I understand. I'm just surprised that a lot of people think that, you know, it's going to be an easy night for Lee. No. I, and I he's see also that on Twitter. I'm like, what are the what the fuck are you guys talking about? He's been submitted quite a few times too. And if there's anyone in the world that can submit anybody in the world, it's Charles Oliveira. Hell yeah, he'll pick them apart. And probably submit him. 
That is a very real possibility. And yeah, I love he's... Lee, but I, I'm not I'm not crazy. I know that can happen. Yeah, he's done it so many times. I'm going to go with Oliveira. I mean, he's on a crazy six-fight win streak, and he's going to be in at home. Great knockout of Gillespie. I did not see that coming, but this is going to be a tough task. And it so, sucks he might not get that Islam fight if he doesn't win this fight. I still want him to get the Islam fight, win or lose, <laughs> and I still think he'll beat the shit out of him. We're going to talk about Islam in just a second. So, actually, that does it for the preview segment let's just get into the headlines for this week and islam still stuck in the dark ages makachev it's not i'm not surprised i am not surprised that he is not a fan of women fighting in a cage but man i'll just say this about it as i mentioned earlier i went on the martial arts chat podcast and one of my biggest takeaways from the from the fights on Saturday was that kind of thanks to Yo Romero and Israel Adesanya having a shitty fight, it highlighted Zhang and Joanna even more. It was already going to be the fight of the night. It was already going to be so hard to beat for fight of the night. That was the takeaway from UFC 248. And the fact that Adesanya and Romero performed the way that they did, everyone was saying, why can't you fight like the girls? The girl's still down. That fight was a shit. I think people are coming around to what I've noticed for years with women's MMA. The whole reason I got into it is that the girls do throw down. And it, it, it usually is very exciting. It's usually way more exciting than the guy fights from what I started seeing. I guess nobody saw that because, I don't know, they just want blood and guts and finishes. And since not all the female fights end like that, they didn't care. Now I think it's front and center. You can't ignore them, and they're just as good as the men. They're just they're most <laughs> probably more exciting than the men, more 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 often than not. And you have Islam Magachev tweeting during the fight that basically women don't belong in the cage. He's a fucking moron. Hate to break it to you, but I mean, have you had performances, spectacular performances, where everybody's like praising you? No, but there was a highlight reel knockout of him getting knocked out by Adriano <laughs> Martins. That's all he's had, right? And he's going to sit there and tweet that out. Okay, yeah, it, maybe it, it's his religion, whatever, but... And culture. <laughs> it's not It's not just religion, it's the culture, too. Culture, too, yeah. You're in the UFC. Your boss is in the United States. He has women fighters male fighters, whatever, like, get with the program. So Support your fellow fighters, you asshole. I, I just don't understand that. Like, you should know by now. You, it's not like, yeah, there's there's a world outside of all that where you live. Mm-hmm, exactly. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, we, we say this we say this a lot regarding American fans because obviously you and I, I'm, I mean, I'm American. I didn't, wasn't born anywhere else, but my family is obviously from somewhere else. You were, you are an immigrant, so we have different perspectives america is not all we know and we try to tell this to the people listening like there's a world outside of this country but yeah i definitely respect what you're saying and you're right to say it especially as an immigrant like yeah respect this country too respect this culture too don't just you know take what you've learned and apply it to everything that you know just fucking moron man he has a fight coming up with like alexander right yeah, we talked about it last week, him and Hernandez, yeah. God damn it, man. I want him to get beat up, but I don't think it's going to happen with Alexander. Islam is such a piece of shit that I want him, I want Alex, <laughs> I'm rooting for Alexander Hernandez thanks to him. Thanks right? To this, but I, I do want to say, I, I didn't, because I know, I didn't really look at the comment beyond what it was. I didn't look at, at, at any other tweets or replies or anything i'm assuming most of it were pissed off women and just people in general saying shut the fuck up but i'm sure there was some people that are defending him and it's his culture really him alone and all that but i feel like a few years ago this was common to be like hey leave him alone don't don't put your beliefs on people from other parts of the world it looks like now it's kind of just like dude after what just happened go fuck yourself like you really are just you are way too fanatical you're way too into your shit that you can't appreciate what's in front of you. Like you're, you're just a dumbass. So, right. I it didn't seem like so many people were defending him. And for that, from the little I saw, I'll give credit to the people that finally come around and see that women are here to stay, and these fights ain't going nowhere because 
honestly, Zhang Wai Li and Joanna Yan Jacek made fans, made women's MMA fans out of many people. I and I, I'm <laughs> I'm fully aware that if I'm gonna stay in this and women's MMA is gonna still be my thing, I'm fully aware that I'm gonna have to up my game because it's not just gonna be the same handful of guys and the same homies that I know. People are gonna start taking this more seriously, and uh, it's not the same ballpark anymore. I'm fully aware of that. So, <laughs> dur- during uh, UFC 248, one of the other things that came out, unfortunately, was that Brian Ortega apparently slapped Jay Park, who is a uh, part of uh, some kind of uh, K-pop group. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't follow that shit. But anyway, he is a famous guy to anyone under the age of 25. And uh, he is a good friend of Korean Zombie. Korean Zombie was there in attendance. This dude was with him. And Ortega decided to slap him because he's a petty little motherfucker. And um, the response that has come Ortega's way has not been nice. I have not been fond of Ortega for a long time, ever since he did steroids. In his first UFC fight, people forget about that. But whatever. People forgave him for it. I didn't. I just decided to stay kind of quiet about it because not a lot of people give a shit about steroids nowadays. I still do. Never liked him. He's white. I don't consider him Mexican. Y'all whites can keep him. Fuck him. I'm kicking him out of the club. Rain, you go ahead. That shit is funny. So yeah, Jay Park, he's he's pretty fucking popular, man. Inter- internationally, I think people are starting to catch on, on about on who he is in the United States now. At least in our world because of this, you know, Brian Ortega's issue. He owns his own label in Korea. He's the first like Asian American to be uh, signed with Rock Nation. Ortega, who the fuck are you fucking with, man? Do you know who you're fucking with? And at the same time, it's like, come on. He was just translating for for the Korean zombie. He was trying to hop up a fight that you keep pulling out of. You you keep making excuses for. So what the fuck? Like uh, it sticks like sticks and stones, right? Like, are you that hurt? Are you that weak that you're going to go after somebody after his homie went into the bathroom and high like a bitch like that? Like, come on, man. You're better than that, right? But I guess not because, you know, little little birdie be tripping in my ears about shit. So I'm not surprised, you know, with the whole steroid issue. And I guess he really didn't like show any remorse after he, he got caught, right? He basically just owned up to it and said sorry. I mean, he got suspended for a year. Like, well, this, okay. keep in mind, folks, for people who are probably kind of new or don't remember this, this was the intelligence test, steroid test. This wasn't USADA coming into his door at 5 a.m. in the morning and telling him to piss in his bottle. This was like, hey, have you done any steroids in the past couple of months? This was one of those tests that he failed. So, yeah, he's not exactly a bright individual. I knew since then. I wasn't pissed off at people testing positive for steroids. I know that people do that. I know that there's plenty of people and fighters that I love that probably do that. But at least they're smart enough to know how to hide it. This motherfucker didn't know shit. I don't care if it was the first fight in the UFC. I don't care if he took it on on last minute notice. If you can't pass that test, I don't even think you should have a fucking driver's license, to be honest with you. Not too bright at all. Yeah. He fucking sat there and tweeted out an apology or whatever, social media, Instagram, whatever it was. An apology. And then he deleted it. I don't know how long he posted it up for, but he deleted it because everybody was basically roasting him. Because it's a fake apology. How long has he been hanging out with John Jones? (laughs) I don't know, man. Is that the problem? I don't know. Um, He's the one that deletes shit all the time. I don't know. Well, he said he admitted in that post that he slapped three people that night. Mm-hmm. When there's an open investigation, so not too bright. Um, and then his homie, Henry Gracie, tweeted something else, too, <laughs> in response to that, that, yeah, instigators should be should be slapped, even though he uh, runs the bully program, the anti-bully program, right? So I lost respect for that guy. I mean, I thought he was one of the good guys, you know, the good guys out of the Gracies, but apparently not. There's no good Gracies. There's no good Gracies. They're all... Tax dodgers, flat earthers, uh, con artists, or just just kind of piece of shit human beings, or just liars. 
that's just kind of the oh and they're all they're all you know spoiled rich kids in brazil so yeah i'm um, sorry i'm sorry folks i know i know there's a lot of people listening to probably train jiu-jitsu and look up to them like you know they're the 12 they're, they're jesus or something but i've never been too fond of the gracies once i found out just a few things about them little by little things come out and uh yeah, they're not good people. Yeah, I'm done with them, man. It, it, the little things I've heard from this little birdie, too. I'm like, okay, all right. Hopefully, it's not. He's not too bad, but eh. yeah. Not, sorry if I'm like not so clear about discussing this. I've I've ranted and raved over it with you, Juice, and with my little birdie too, and you know, been like really pissed off about it because it's just fucking ridiculous like you're a piece of shit you're so fucking fake man every time i see his name i'm like guy you're so fucking fake everybody thinks he's a good guy brian ortega he had a choice he was in the projects oh yeah you talk shit you're gonna get slapped dude this kid was translating for the korean zombie he's not even actually a trained translator that's not his job he was just helping his homie out. That was it. And then this kid wants, wants to be all fucking tough. When the big guy goes into the bathroom, when the actual fighter goes into the bathroom, he's going to go punk a civilian. You're a bitch. There was some people defending him after this, and I didn't God. really care too much because I just, I, I guess I just wasn't surprised by this shit because it was just some bitch-made shit. But I, I was like, how come I'm not cool with this, but I was okay with Masvidal? piecing up Leon Edwards and it's like well it's obvious that's a fighter he knew what could have came as well and he was with his trainers and shit I mean he put himself honestly that was kind of dumb of him to do because that was pretty dangerous but he and he did it in front of camera so it wasn't the smartest thing he did but it's not like he took advantage of anyone it's not like he was fighting some person that was helpless and it's not like he started it you can right? say what you want about he should have ignored it or this and that okay there's a debate to be had about that but he approached them and he didn't like how he came at him, so he socked him. And that was it. At yeah. least Leon Edwards could defend himself. And he yeah. had people behind him that could have taken Masvidal out, too. Right? During a fucking, like, interview, mm-hmm. Jorge just, like... And you know what? <laughs> I got to give Masvidal credit, too. For my homegirl, Laura, he stepped away from Laura Sanko, man. He he did, he did not want <laughs> to see all that violence, because that woman does not need to... Uh, Get any blood on her dresses and stuff, man, because she's a classy <laughs> woman. She don't need that shit. So right. good on you, Jorge. He took off, hands behind his back, and handled it. And didn't give a fuck who was around. Gangster, you're a fucking savage. And he did it in a different country. Yeah, that's really dangerous because England don't play that shit. Apparently they forgave him for this one, but yeah, you never know. That's, that's scary. Yeah. Get locked up in a different country. Yeah. Yeah, fuck that. And then this kid, sit your ass down, man. And and for any of you that think that this is like okay or think that, oh, it's just some stupid shit and just hood dudes being hood dudes, Masvidal showed how a real hood dude handles it. If Ortega, you know, wherever he, I don't know what his situation was. And if he was around some homies in SoCal, like people that I knew growing up with, and this is the kind of shit that he got involved with, They'd put him against the wall for 13 seconds. And uh, if you guys don't know gang terminology, yeah, that motherfucker was going to get jumped because you don't do stupid shit like that. And you don't act like a bitch, especially when there's another fighter in the room. You got to handle your shit. And he did not do that. So that was that. We were going to talk about some fights getting uh, canceled because of coronavirus, but that's just a given now. So, oh, Cindy <laughs> Grandois has joined the PFL. She's going up. Uh, she's always kind of fought between bantamweight and featherweight either or now she's fighting at lightweight she's gonna possibly go against <laughs> kayla harrison she should get through as her fellow judoka and uh she's not the only one they've signed uh kamara usman's brother brother muhammad they've signed tom lawler clay collard marcine held we announced last year olivia uh Abian mercier bubba jenkins they got a new, they got a whole lot of new talent in there, and obviously Roy McDonald's from a few week, from a few months back. Um, I think just, this, I think this, Willis, Justin too. Willis, yeah, Justin Willis. I think this season is going to be pretty exciting. I'm, I'm actually probably going to sit and watch every single fight this time. Yep, looks good, man. 
I don't know how long Cindy's gonna last, but it, yeah, but that's the thing. That's the honestly a big reason of why I tune into Cindy Danwell's fights. One, they're just entertaining. I don't care how bad her striking may be. It's it entertains me. But secondly, she's this overachiever, man. Every time you count her out, she's kind of like Roxanne Montefiore in that sense. Kind of harmless. She doesn't look that intimidating. But a lot of times when you count her out, that's when she has her best fights. Wow. She, like, I just got to say, shout out to Cindy. You've been looking phenomenal. Yeah, and she's looked, uh, she doesn't seem in bad spirits over the incident that happened a few months ago with whoever that guy was that, that hit her. She looks to, I don't want to say getting over that, but she's definitely doesn't look to be dwelling on that. So good for you. And uh, I wish you the best in the tournament, man, because I wanted Sarah Kaufman and a few of these girls to be Kayla Harrison. Obviously, she won. But if Cindy Dandwell beats her, a fellow judoka, especially if she like submits her or some shit, oh my gosh, she could be a superstar. This would be amazing. I want nothing but good things for Cindy Dandwell. So, so that's that. And that does it for the headlines. Let's get into some matchups. <laughs> First, uh, possibly the biggest fight that has been announced. I don't think it's official, but all but official. Robert Whitaker is going to take on Darren Till. It looks like it's going to be the headline, the headliner for UFC Dublin, taking place on August fifteenth. Um, I know it was originally supposed to be Whitaker and Cannonier, right, Rain? That's what I thought. Yeah. So I don't know what happened here, but Till, I mean, he's he's like in the top five right now. And Whitaker, at this point, is going to be almost a year since he lost his uh, his title. And then who knows? Again, we don't even know why he's been pulled out of his last fight. Personal issues. Dana seemed okay with it. So I got to assume it's very serious. What do you think? I mean, do you think it's going to be an exciting fight? Do you think it's going to be a clear win for Whitaker? Do you think it's kind of 50-50? Um, right now it's fifty fifty, just because of the way he performed with um, Calvin. And so uh, you don't think Darren Till is gonna be like that that killer he was at welterweight? You're still not sure. Well, and I was gonna say like I don't know where Whitaker's head is at, especially with that knockout. We still don't know what happened with him, why he pulled out. I don't know. It might be pretty even. We'll see though. That's in August, yeah. Who knows what's going to happen, man? Like, uh, Darren Till shouldn't have any weight cut issues. It's going to be in Dublin. Nah. So he shouldn't have any visa issues. So, yeah. Yeah, he still has to travel, but yeah, not obviously not across the pond. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a good matchup. I just don't know what happened with Jared, though. He'll come back soon enough. But yeah, that that is interesting. They didn't rebook that. But I guess given that they wanted Till, something for Dublin makes sense. At least the Brits. Close enough. Edson Barboza is going to go down a featherweight and fight Josh Emmett. Oh, God. This, this looks to be happening at the Oklahoma City card, which is taking place on May 2nd. Okay, because he tweeted out, please just release me. Barboza? Yes, he wanted to be released by the UFC. To not cash that. Yeah, he's like, it's not working out. Let's just part ways. Please release me. And then now there's this fight? Damn, dude. Okay. I'm glad he's not leaving, but he's going down in weight. Yeah, Ooh. I'm Ooh. given given this. Yeah, I'm not I'm not too sure about this one. I I think Emmett might clean his clock. Yeah, maybe it's one of those. It's like you take this fight, then and, and then yeah, we'll go ahead and release you. Cause that it, that's strange to me that they were yeah. able to turn around, around like that and I don't know satisfy his needs or something. I I gotta look it up and see if he actually um, extended his contract out or not. But yeah. It was like earlier this week, I think. He tweeted that out. Yeah, tough fight ahead of him, though. So best of luck to him. On that same card, this can be, man, this is like a fight that really, it's not on the radar almost at all, but really needs to be. Drew Dober is going to fight Carlos Diego Fajeda. I don't know who to pick in this one. I forgot who Fajaya actually called out, and I was wondering <laughs> if they would give him to him because he would murder that man. But this one, I'm not sure. Yeah, Dober is slowly but surely become a legit contender, and Fajeda, the guy that ever, everyone slept on, after that uh, Showtime submission, people know better, but mm-hmm. Dober is no joke. This is tough. Yeah, it's going to be a banger. I can't wait. That's actually 
a really good card. It's pretty stacked. Yeah, little by little, it's it's coming up. It's it's mm-hmm. uh, it's building up. Yeah, it should be a good card. Can't wait. Uh, in some Bellator news, they announced uh, the re- the rematch between Michael Chandler and Ben Henderson. Uh, it's taking place at a, in some event on June sixth. Uh, no official title. No Bellator two fifty. Nothing. Haven't said anything. This was originally booked in Japan, the end of year card, but Henderson pulled out. I think it was some kind of leg injury. So now it's happening again. There's that. And then uh, apparently one of the cards is going to, one of the fights is going to be on that same card is AJ McKee and Darren Caldwell, which is a fight that I think is a, another sleeper fight that can be one of the best ones this year. So just some general thoughts on those two fights, Rain. Damn. Okay. Chandler Henderson, too. All right. Where's he First, gonna be at? Um, I believe I want to say that I think this is taking place in Chicago. Oh, okay. Damn. Okay. Same as the uh, McKee and Caldwell. Nice. I'll try to catch it, but it's so hard with them. I don't know if it's on the app or what. It, it, the first part was pretty close between them two, and um, I don't know. Henderson is kind of tough with. I don't know if it's a motivation thing with him. He doesn't look all there sometimes, but right. if he's yeah. yeah, if he's 100% in, and well, Chandler, he won his last fight in December against the, that guy that took it on last notice, I think Sydney Outlaw, but he did get beat by Patricio by knockout too, so we'll see how he's going to come back. I, I know he's already gotten a win, but I guess a guy like Henderson, see if he can do it again. And then McKee and Caldwell. McKee, I've been... Pff, Love that kid for so long. Darren Caldwell, I can't stand. So it's going to be interesting <laughs> to see how this goes. This is part of the Grand Prix. So that, that tournament's still advancing. So, oh, one last thing before we're finished with, M- with MMA. I do not think I mentioned it earlier. Leslie Smith is fighting Jesse Miel. That has not been announced. It's actually happening on Friday at the Bell Tour 241 card, I believe. That's on the prelim section. Don't know why they're not on the main card. I don't want anyone to drop out, but if they do drop out, they need to bump these girls up because Leslie Smith deserves to be on a wider set of eyes. And that Jesse Mail girl is not bad either. So this should be a hell of a scrap. And obviously, we're down with Leslie Smith because she's a hippie that actually washes her hands. <laughs> and plus, Man. she's just, you know, just a crazy ass fighter. Yeah, her ear exploded. That's, I'll never forget that that fight with Jessica. I, you know, I have Bellator. I have the notification on and everything for Bellator, and that this fight didn't pop up for me. I, it totally skipped by me too. I don't even know. I I, I went on Tapology and saw them. I'm like, oh shit, they are fighting. But and then I looked down the card. And I'm like, oh, Leslie Smith got to talk about her. But yeah, I damn near forgot about her. So yeah, I didn't catch it until Chris Cyborg tweeted something out. <laughs> so yeah, promotion is not always the best with them, but gotta give shout outs to Leslie Smith whenever she comes up. So. Check it out, guys. Always got to watch a Leslie Smith fight. But that does it for MMA. Let's get into the new segment of the week. Headline is, Girlfriend on Valentine's Day taunts boyfriend for not having a bike. He steals eight. So this was in Delhi, India. It was Delhi, New Delhi. But yeah, apparently this girl... <laughs> it's kind of hard. The article is kind of hard because it's like kind of like in broken up English. It doesn't make too much sense. It's like in very small sentences, but... Yeah, that, that's basically the whole story. Is uh, uh, th- I don't know why this girl was uh, making fun of this dude for not having a bike. So him and his friends stole eight of them. It sounds like either him or her liked going out. Like, sounds like this girl was accustomed to a certain life. And I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of dudes around there who was riding around in bikes. And she was mad that her boyfriend wasn't. So he made a point to not just get one, but get a few. <laughs> First of all, she's a bitch. Why you gotta taunt your your boyfriend like that? You're a bitch. Secondly, did he have to steal eight? I think two would have been fine. One for him and one for her. Um, why, why do you have to get greedy? Maybe he want. Okay, how about this? Maybe he wanted one for her, so that leaves seven. The other seven would be him for every day of the week. You know, like it's Rod Asanya, the Porsche every day of the week. A bike for every day of the week. That shit is funny. 
and bike as in like like a Vespa, like one of those things, little mini motorcycles. That's what we're talking about, not an actual bicycle <laughs> or bike. Or a you know motorcycle, what I mean? yeah. Yeah. Well, it's India. I mean, a lot in the, India and a lot of those Asian countries. That's kind of how you get around is by scooter yeah. Vespa thing. Yeah. Yep, scooters. He was he was stealing scooters. So the bitch was taunting him because he didn't have a scooter. Hey, you gotta. You got to show out for the ladies, man. I mean, over here we do it with rims and tinted windows and <laughs> neon lights and shit over there. You do man. it with uh, fucking Vespas. See, he could have just stole two and just cleaned these scooters up, put some rims on it. You know, he, he didn't have to steal eight. Go, go big or go home, Reem. <laughs> Quantity over quality. Yeah, he even had his homie involved with this, so they're both in trouble. Because this bitch was taunting his her boyfriend. You know what? This is a this is a bad friend. I mean, I know there's some you know, your homies will help, willing to help <laughs> you do crime. He may be a good friend. He may not. But if he told him, hey, my girlfriend made fun of me for not having a bike, so I'm gonna steal him, and he didn't be like, wait, 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 hold on, wait, wait, she's making funny. What the fuck are you gonna do for fuck her? Leave her ass. That's that's not a good homie, man. You yeah. know your your homies in some shit. You you got to guide that man. He's about to go to jail. He's well, yeah. They did get arrested because he was riding around without a, a license plate, basically. And when they saw the description and they saw no license plate, they pulled him over, and uh, they got him and the friend, and they fessed up. And they're like, "Yeah, we stole like six other ones," and that was that. I wonder if the cops were on a scooter too. Wouldn't wouldn't that be some shit? Seen a <laughs> like a car chase, but on scooters. Yeah. And isn't like, it like crowded there? <laughs> throwing like their batons at them, you know. I don't know if they carry guns or not in India, but throwing batons and shit. Oh, what a wild! Flashing story. flashlights in their face, right? Trying to distract them so they can fall off. Oh, wild! Some good, some good news stories we get out of India sometimes. It's definitely, I mean, I guess in a country of a billion people, you're gonna ex- expect some fuckery here and there. Definitely. Yeah. God, don't gotta taunt him though. Damn, you greedy bitch. <laughs> I'm like blaming Wait. her. Even though it was his actions, he could have just been like, no, fuck you, bitch. I'm going with somebody else. I'm going roll with some other girl. No. Reen knows shaming very well, and even she thinks that this is wrong. So, yeah. I'll, <laughs> I'll take uh, I'll take your uh, word for it, Reen. Yeah, that's uh, it's not cool. Get shame for things of like being a failure, being a bad parent, failing your kids at school. But yeah, this bigger fish to fry. It's funny. Oh, I love our news story segment. <laughs> takes takes away from some of the fuckery because even in MMA, although we love this shit, there's there's a lot of fuckery in MMA too. So yeah, brings a little levity. For sure. So, <laughs> so that does it for tonight. Thank you guys for listening. You can find me on Twitter at Juice underscore MMA. Rain. Fox with you on Instagram and Twitter. And you can find the podcast at iFoxWithJuice on Instagram and Twitter too. And we're everywhere the podcasts are. Spotify, Spreaker, iTunes, you name it, we're there. So give us a like, retweet, share, subscribe, whatever you have to do. Get the word out. Help us out. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you all next week. Later. See you.